And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the first week of February 2022. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's edition, we're going to talk about Project TEACH. It's a brand new program here in Aroostook County being offered by the Aroostook County Action Program in partnership with the Maine Cancer Foundation that provided a grant to support this work. We're going to talk with Andrea White, who's leading the project here for ACAP and how it especially is designated to help individuals who are experiencing or going through cancer treatment at this time. We're gonna talk about that, that very important pro program and how it can help people across Aroostook County in just a little bit. But before we get to that, as we do at each point in the broadcast, we're going to first get to the news and information that you can use again for this, the first week of February, 2021. And with our news, we begin with the announcement as we had predicted or had shared with you last week that the statewide community needs assessment and the complimentary Aroostook County report are now available for viewing. You can go on to the ACAP website to view either the full first of its kind statewide report put out by Maine Community Action Partnership, our statewide association that covers all 10 community action agencies, and view the specific Aroostook County report uh, that is based upon the data collected as well as the interviews that were conducted and the survey results uh, from across the region, more than 800 people were surveyed and altogether about 1,000 people took part in this process at one point or another. We invite you to go see those as we will be building our agency's strategic plan on the needs addressed in the community needs assessment for the next three years. And we are also sharing obviously with all of you and community partners who we hope join us in our efforts to uh, combat poverty and other challenging issues uh, in this community that are identified in the community needs assessment. So please go and check it out on the ACAP website, acap-me.org. We also want to let folks know that in partnership with our sister cat, Penquis, out of Penobscot County, we are offering a partnership program called the Foster Grandparent Program. Uh, it invites volunteer grandparents to serve as role models, mentors, and friends to children with exceptional needs. Uh, we will be talking about that further and in further detail in a future edition of ACAP today, but in the meantime, we certainly invite you to uh, check out the information, give a call uh, to learn more about the program at 1-800-215-4942, extension 3611. Uh, this program is open to volunteers ages 55 and older uh, who are invited to stay active by serving children and youth at schools, nonprofit child care centers, and preschools. Uh, and they, as a result, receive a tax-free stipend that won't affect their Social Security, their SSI, rent subsidies, HEAP, or any other benefits. So it's a great way to volunteer, also make a little bit of a stipend there and not have it impact your household income against some of those critical support programs uh, that many seniors rely on. We also are reminding folks again, we talked about this last week, that there's a bad art party, and it's just what it sounds like. It's going, and uh, if you're not the most talented artist, like I am, this is a great opportunity for you, especially youth, um, because this is designated specifically for youth and will be held uh, for grades, students in grades five through 12 on the afternoon of Friday, February 4th, which in Presque Isle is an early dismissal day. So students uh, looking for something to do that afternoon when they're out of school early can head on over to the Presque Isle Housing Authority's community room at the Birch Street Community Center on, again on Friday, February 4th. We'll be providing snacks, drinks, hot cocoa, uh, and coffee available there. Uh, give us a call at 764-3721 if you'd like to make sure that you have a slot available there. I think you can just show up though. Um, and we also are encouraging people to give us a call if they have art supplies that they'd like to donate for the children to enjoy, uh, the young adults that are gonna be there to enjoy. So again, if you have art supplies that you'd like to donate, reach out to us here at ACAP and we gladly take those to help support this bad art party coming up at the Presque Isle Housing Authority on Friday, February 4th. We also are reminding folks that the tax season is now upon us and free tax preparation appointments are now available for households with a combined income of less than $58,000. So if your combined income falls under that amount, you are eligible to receive free tax assistance and have your taxes completed by a, a certified preparer or a trained preparer who's been trained by the IRS. 
Uh, there are three easy steps. First is to schedule your tax appointment uh, by calling 211 or visiting cashmain.org. Either one of those will allow you to book an appointment right here in Aroostook County at one of the three locations, Presque Isle, Fort Kent, or Holton, where they will be held. Um, and you can also, uh, once you see if you qualify, then you will actually participate in the tax filing process. And some of those are the drive-through, uh, drop and scan files. Um, and ACAP, of course, is partnering with the United Way of Aroostook, New Ventures, Maine, and a coalition of other organizations, including the County Federal Credit Union, to bring this program to you here in Aroostook County. For more information or to schedule your appointment, again, 211Maine or cashmaine.org. We also reminding folks and are pleased to announce that our Breakthrough Youth Program is adding a session in Caribou. We talked about this last week on our program or two weeks ago, mentioned it in the news again last week. Uh, the class that started last week at MSAD1 Adult Education is still accepting students. Those are held on Wednesdays from five to seven. But the Presque Isle Housing Authority class starts this week uh, on the 1st from three to five o'clock and will continue on Tuesdays. So please do consider um, taking advantage of that opportunity. And we have added a caribou session that will start on the 10th of February. Uh, and that one will be held from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Eastern Aroostook Adult and Community Education Office at Caribou High School. So please do reach out to us, prevention at acap-me.org. Call us at 764-3721 if you'd like more information on either of those three offerings but please do consider joining into one. It's a great program that helps with everything from financial literacy to career development, as well as making smart and good, healthy choices um, in life. So it's a great program. Check it out. We encourage youth, um, specifically youth uh, at age 16 through 24 to connect with this program. Uh, we also are reminding folks that you can, if you have not done so already, and if you are the unique um, person living at this particular address or your particular address, I should say, to request up to four free at home COVID-19 tests that are going to, that are completely free and will ship out in seven to 12 days. You can go to uh, covidtest.gov to sign up to have those tests delivered free to your home. Uh, there are also some other testing resources uh, that are available and accessible there on your on that page. We encourage everyone to do that to have a stockpile at home if and when you need them. We also are reminding folks about the importance of getting vaccinated or boosted here in our community. Uh, you can visit maine.gov slash COVID-19 slash vaccines, as it indicates there on your screen, uh, to see where there's a local vaccination clinic or booster clinic next to you. You can also give us a call here at 764-3721 if you're unable to navigate online for whatever reason and want additional information, we'd be happy to provide that to you. As a reminder, anyone who is 12 and older has all, and has already received the COVID-19 vaccine Vaccine is now eligible for a booster shot if the appropriate amount of time has passed since your vaccination. There's also a free vaccine ride program that the Department of Health and Human Services continues to offer. The telephone number there on your screen with a 48 hour notice will get you that assistance if you are looking for transportation to and from a COVID-19 vaccination or booster appointment. Speaking of COVID-19, we continue to offer the community supports for individuals who are asked to isolate or quarantine. This includes free grocery and meal delivery. Not only is the, uh, is the delivery free, but the actual items that are purchased are of no charge to you. We encourage you to reach out to us. There's a number of other services that we offer, but if you're asked to isolate or quarantine and are in need of any support that will help you stay in place in your home, please give us a call, 764-3721. You can also go on to the DHHS website uh, Google it, if you will, uh, COVID community supports, and uh, you can uh, do a referral form right there. You can do one for someone outside of Aroostook County as well, and the CAP agency in that community will be dispatched to help that individual, of course, with their permission. The Emergency Rental Assistance Program continues to take new applicants. At this point, we are especially encouraging senior citizens in the community who have not yet applied for the Emergency Rental Assistance Program to continue to do so. The parameters of the emergency uh, rental assistance program are rather simple. If you meet the income qualification guidelines, which are listed on our website, we'll also talk you through those if you want to give us a call so you can determine if you're income eligible. But if you've been impacted at all at any point in this period of time by higher costs, we know electricity has gone up, the cost of fuel oil has gone up, the cost of groceries have gone up. If you are a renter and meet the income eligibility guidelines and any costs have increased for you whatsoever living on your fixed 
income, this is an opportunity to apply for this program. Now, if you uh, qualify for this program, it is important to note that the payment will go directly on your rental assistance and your utility assistance. So we can pay for rent, utilities that include electricity, uh, some assistance with fuel, uh, internet cable, those things that uh, get you connected to the world will also be provided. All of those payments will be made directly to the vendor or to your landlord. So there's no change in your household income. It will not impact your ability and your household income so that you will be unable or disqualified for other important programs like the Home Energy Assistance Program. Please do consider applying if you are a senior for the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, especially with the electric uh, cost of electricity that just went out recently. We've had a lot of seniors reach out to us. And unfortunately, there's just not a program uh, that we can help support the, the great needs that you have right now, aside from this one. And we apologize to homeowners. We're waiting for the state to come out with a program for homeownership assistance. That is not available yet, uh, but as soon as it is, we'll get you information on that. But if you're a renter and a senior, this program is for you and we want to help. So give us a call, 764-3721, and ask about the emergency rental assistance program and how you apply. If you are online, go to mainhousing.org slash COVID rent and you can complete the application right there online and we'll begin to, the, to process it. it. Takes between four to eight weeks for processing. So we encourage seniors to get right on that. It depends on how heavy our volume of uh, rental assistance applications is at the time on the length of the application processing period. Speaking of programs that can be of assistance, if you are not a current home energy assistance program participant, we are booking appointments now into March. Um, but it is certainly worth your while to get into the Home Energy Assistance Program. You see on the screen there the income qualification guidelines for different household sizes. We also have different look back periods that we can do. We can look back over an entire year, but if you've had some change in your income in just the last three months or even just the last month, we can certainly accommodate for that. Uh, please do check this out. We encourage you to apply, get that appointment in, in March. Any benefit that goes on your account will indeed remain on your account for up to 18 months or when it is fully util utilized. And again, this program as well does not discount um, your household income or does not go against your household income because the benefit goes directly to the fuel vendor of your choice and goes on your account there. Uh, but again, 768-3053 or energy at acap-me.org is the way to get in touch with this program. And now is not a bad time to get an appointment in to apply. And if we have not talked about something here and you are in need of assistance with things, we have a pretty resourceful group of folks here that might be able to help. They're called ACAP Navigators. Give us a call at 764-3721. If we don't have the program, they'll help navigate you to perhaps the community partner who does have assistance available for you. And that is this week's news and information that you can use. Uh, we hope that you have had a great piece of information here that you can take with you and we can help you in some other way. Now we're going to turn to our feature interview for the week where we're going to provide you with some other worthwhile information, especially if you're one of the many Arusta County residents who are unfortunately going through uh, treatment for cancer at this point right now. And we're so pleased to have a repeat guest to the Arusta County Action Program. She tends to pop up and is always talking about a new and exciting program. We've had her talk about heat before. We've had her talk about uh, how she was helping people just recently during the open enrollment period uh, for a healthcare navigation. Um, and she's working on some really other really exciting things, including what we're going to talk about here uh, in this edition of ACAP today. And that's the project Teach. And I'm pleased to welcome back to the program, uh, Andrea White. Andrea, welcome. Thank you, Jason. Nice to be here again. <laughs> right. So let, I'm going to bring up a slide here so that we can start right from the top to talk about Project Teach and you can explain what this exciting new initiative and from what I'm understanding in your first few weeks already working on this, this much needed innovation uh, and opportunity is for the people of Arista County. It so sure Project is, Jason. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think with the many hats that I wear at ACAP here, I, I have to say this, this is becoming my favorite one um, for many reasons, but I think mainly because it's just nice to know that patients and their families now have some resources that they probably didn't know about to help with some challenges, you know, getting to appointments, paying for fuel, paying for lodging, paying for, you know, how to get there. And, and you, when you're diagnosed with cancer, you're kind of walking in a circle. You don't know where to go. You don't know where to turn. 
And over the last couple of weeks since I've learned about this grant and have been working with this grant from the Maine Cancer Foundation, a wonderful organization who's raised millions of dollars over the years for this exact reason, is that <clears throat> there's so many resources out there that we just don't know. And you're confused and you don't know where to turn. So I have been finding about out about a ton of resources just in the county area that I myself didn't know about. And I am gonna work to uh, be able to uh, publish those resources that I've learned about on our ACAP website for everybody to enjoy um, and to research and look. Um, but as far as APCAP goes, the Project TEACH grant from the Maine Cancer Foundation is to assist with food, lodging, and transportation. So that being said, there is no income guideline requirements to be able to get this funding from ACAP and lots of other programs that I'm gonna put on the website soon, which is good because the last thing you wanna worry about is financial statements and all of this for a very small stipend of assistance. But we have a referral form, a very simple homegrown referral form that you can take to a medical, your medical professional who is familiar with your cancer diagnosis to sign off and say, yes, Joe Smith will be traveling for cancer treatments. Get that back to me and I can offer you gas cards. I can offer you reimbursement. If you can save your receipts for the gas that you've already spent, hotels you've already stayed in, uh, meals you've already eaten, keep your receipts because when I get them back, I can then just cut you a check and it makes it a lot easier. So. One of the challenges that we're facing throughout the counter county is transportation. There really isn't anybody, I wish I could say, yes, ACAP has volunteers and we will drive you to your appointment or it, it doesn't quite work that way. Um, so what we do know is that we have uh, air, uh, air travel available. We have angel flight availability. That number will be on our website. We have PALS, the patient airlift uh, services that go to Portland and Boston. If you have a long journey ahead of you, they don't charge for that. So if that is a service that might benefit you to get to those long distance appointments, we can talk about that. So with what we have to offer at ACAP through the grant this first year, Jason, is, is about $250 to $300. You know, um, it's not much, but I can also put you in touch with other entities that I know offer financial assistance and stipends also. So it's, it's just a matter of me networking other people other organizations in the county to kind of help the patients as a whole, you know, kind of get to where they need. So a couple hundred bucks here and there from different organizations will really help. And, you know, the last thing you need to worry about is how do I get there? You know, I need to stay in a hotel. Well, that's expensive. Well, you know what, maybe there is a, a place that um, you can stay for free like Sarah's house in Holden, if you're having cancer treatment in Brewer. Um, you know, there's places, there's all kinds of resources like that that we're gonna post on our website and that you can you can call and, and just make, make a reservation, reach out and, and go from there. And it, it can be very daunting and we know that. So if I can give you a hundred resources to look into, then I will, and I'm going to. So it's, it's, it's been a wonderful um, journey for me to kind of find out all of these other resources and partners in the county so that we can deliver the best ability for you to get to that cancer treatment. Because like I've said before on WAGM News, I've said, it's not an option for you not to get there. You've got to get there. And so let me help you try to get there. So it's been wonderful. It's been a great, I've talked to lots of people already. Um, and they're so grateful. It's been wonderful. And Andrea, I imagine you're also connecting them. I you just went through the news segment with programs like the Home Energy Assistance Program and with the uh, Rental Assistance Program, if they're a renter, to really, you know, beyond just getting them to and from an appointment, life sometimes cha obviously changes drastically with a cancer diagnosis. It, 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 it sometimes in, it impacts your ability to be gainfully employed. So you might you know, qualify for these other programs that will help lighten the burden in other ways as well, correct? 
Yes, that's actually true, Jason. In fact, everybody that I've talked to so far, I have invited them to look into some of our other programs. I can put you, uh, I can put stuff in the mail for you. I can give you the website. I mean, I can, I can point you in the right direction because, you know, you make a really good point, Jason, is that this isn't just, you know, a cancer diagnosis. This is a life diagnosis. This is something that's going to affect your life from the top down in so many ways. And there's other resources that we have that I'm happy to share and I have been sharing. So um, our website is fantastic. Um, or if, and if you don't have the internet, if you don't have a way to, to get on there and really look, I'll, I'll mail you whatever you need to know. So lots and of programs one, out there. And that's one of the things that I think you were just talking about in part of, of your, your sort of first uh, answer to my first question about what is Project Teach. One of the things you're gonna be doing, as I understand it, is pulling together uh, a, a resource guide so that people will have it in one place online to go and to see, because as you've been learning in this new role, uh, there are resources available out there. It's just sometimes connecting the dots, especially for somebody who's, you know, experiencing a diagnosis and just flooded with other information. You have been able to sort of help pull to pull that together for folks, correct? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's been a real learning curve for me. And I, everybody I talk to, you know, the navigators or the nurse practitioner, nurse navigators at, at said hospital or, or whatever, they've been so happy, it, it, you know, happy and willing to tell me all about their plan, their programs, what they've done. Some programs are very area specific. So we have the Edgar J. Parity Foundation, for example, that uh, part of that is, is very specific to the, to the, the St. John Valley area, the Holton area. We have another uh, program, uh, the Bridge to Hope, that is actually specific to folks more in the Holton, Bridgewater, Dyer Brook, area, Holton sort of little bubble. And so that's really good to know too, because guess what? You call me, I'm like, oh, you live in Holton? Call my friend Kim. And so it's kind of like, and I am really excited if anybody who's listening to this has had experience with this at all and can share any information with me. I am always gathering, I'm always documenting, and I'm always willing to share everything I've learned. And I, I feel like, you know, we're all in this together. This is not just like you need to stay in your own little bubble. Like I have resources for mental health counseling and support groups and where to stay and where to get some money and all of these things. And, and, but if you don't, if you're, you're so consumed by your diagnosis and you're so upset, it's very upsetting. What do you do? Where do you go from here? So I feel like it'd be one, a great place to have just, it's one, um, you know, congregate of, of resources. And I will add to that all the time. The more I in, information I get, the more I can share with the community. So I am all ears. If you want to tell me any resource that you know, or my mom had this and it was great, you know, please tell me about it. And then I can share with other people. And that's, that's really what it's all about is we're just a very small community and we just need to take care of each other. And that information is, is in the process and will be posted uh, soon on, on ACAP's uh, website, correct? It will. It will. Yeah, we're working hard on it. <laughs> and I will add to it as I get more information. In the meantime, you're also a resource. You can help uh, talk people through. I know you've been working with individuals who have called you directly, who have connected with you after seeing some of the media information, perhaps after seeing this interview that might uh, touch and reach somebody. Um, so people can uh, directly reach out and contact you and, and you can help you know, sort of talk them through some of those resources and, and help get them connected in addition to the support we might be able to provide them? Absolutely. Anytime. And if I'm not here, if I don't directly pick up, just leave a message. I call everybody back by the end of the day. Great. And this, if you want to just share your contact information with folks verbally, I've got it up on the screen, but if you want to share that, that would be helpful. Absolutely. So my email address is awhite at acap-me.org. Or you can call 764-3721 and dial extension 150. I mean, you'll get right to my desk. All right, that's Andrea White. Andrea, anything else about Project Teach that you wanted to share that folks should know about? I just think that it's just such a wonderful resource that, that we have been, the privilege of been, being awarded this grant and uh, to be stewards of such an important um, mission, you know, is really important. And, you know, this is uh, so meaningful. I, I, 
I used to work at a, an area hospital for, for many years. And, and one of the oncologists told me with great confidence, he said, this is the highest level of cancer I've ever seen in my life up here in this region. Nobody knows why, but mm -hmm. it just is what it is. And so because of that, we it, it's more important now for us to be able to have these resources at our fingertips um, and, uh, and see what, what we can offer you. It's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing. And Maine Cancer Foundation has been amazing for years in, in getting this, getting their mission out and getting the money out there to help people in more ways than one. We are certainly appreciative to Maine Cancer Foundation uh, for this support and for allowing this program, Project Teach, uh, to be launched here in Aroostook County through ACAP. So indeed, I join uh, in thanking Maine Cancer Foundation along with you, as I'm sure all of the people who will benefit from uh, Project Teach uh, can certainly do as well. Uh, Andrea White, thank you so much for being my guest on this edition of ACAP today. Uh, before we leave you and before we leave everyone else, just a couple of uh, quick reminders that we do at this point in the broadcast. I first want to share with you all that if you'd like to join our team like Andrea did, uh, we have so many position op openings right now across Aroostook County. We've had some new programs, not only this one, but others that have been added. Uh, and we've been able to add some positions and other key programs. We're definitely a growing organization and we'd love for you to be a part of that. We have a number of community educate, educator positions, including in housing stability, uh, SNAP education and oral health that are available. We would love to see folks who have uh, talent and skill in the construction and trades uh, or interest in that. We can help train you uh, in weatherization workers. That's going to be a huge growing uh, field within our organization as more weatherization dollars come into Aroostook County. So if you would like to help keep seniors and families in their homes and keep them warm during the winter, we would love to have you consider applying and joining our team. We also have a number of positions available in our early care and education classrooms from Presque Isle to Fort Kent to Caribou uh, and a bus driver in Dyer Brook and also have a custodian opening in Presque Isle. So if you have what it takes for any of these positions, we would love to see your application. You can connect with us at acap-me.org or visit our Facebook page and get more information. We have some benefits as well. Um, so certainly worth checking those out and we'd love to have you join our team. And as we do at each point at the end of our broadcast, we are taking you to our snapshot of the week. And as we have done since the beginning of this new year, given that it's ACAP's 50th anniversary, we are doing a throwback snapshot of the week each week. And this is a throwback to 1981, where a member of our energy and housing team there, and then was installing a what was called, and I'm not a technical person or a handy person by any means, but what I'm told is a bread box water heater on a house back in Presque Isle or in Presque Isle back in 1981. And so uh, just a way to touch on all of our programs. Last week, it was a throwback, a snapshot from our early care and education programs with kids at one of the centers in Presque Isle that is no longer still uh, up in, in, and operating as a building, um, but we are pleased to this week to spotlight in our throwback snapshot of the week, our energy and housing team uh, with this photo uh, of a team member back in 1981. And with that, that's this week's edition of ACAP Today. We are so glad that you joined us here on this first week of February. Please stay warm, folks out there, and stay safe. We'll be back next week with another, another edition of ACAP Today with another great topic and some great guests. We'll see you then.